Hello and welcome to the Department of the Navy's Office of Force Resiliency's latest installment of our interview series. My name is Dr. Nicholas Polizzi and I am the Suicide Prevention Pillar Lead here in the Department of the Navy Office of Force Resiliency, Don OFR, here in the Pentagon. We have this interview series really to highlight, uh, emphasize, and frankly just spread the word about all the great resources that are available to sailors, Marines, and their families. So we bring in experts and ask them questions to help learn more about the programs and services that are available worldwide for sailors, Marines, and their families. So uh, we're very glad you could join us today. Uh, today's interview is called Your Quality of Service Matters, Navy Resources. And to discuss the resources that are out there that support quality of service, we are thrilled to welcome Miss Kathy Vai here to the interview series. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you for having me. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, Kathy is a licensed clinical social worker and works at Commander Navy Installations Command or CNIC headquarters and has been there since 2016. While she's been there, she's been in charge of many great programs and had many accomplishments, most recently including helping implement the Sailor Assistance and Intercept for Life program or uh, SAIL and as well as the new virtual clinical counseling program for sailors. Um, Kathy, when we talk about quality of service, that's Navy's way of saying, here we have the combination of quality of life, which in other words happens at home, and then or outside of our work, and then quality of work, which of course is our work. But we all know it's very hard to leave work at work and home at home, and they blend together. And the Navy, I think, quite rightly realizes that when you blend together quality of work, quality of home life, what you really have is overall quality of service. And now at CNIC and your work with uh, fleet and family support programs, I'm wondering what sort of broad support fleet and family support programs can offer folks or how they approach offering services for quality of service. Sure. So the mission of the Fleet and Family Support Program is to assist commands in achieving operational readiness, member retention, superior performance, and a reasonable quality of life for our sailors and family members. Commands and the Fleet and Family Support Program share similar goals such as keeping our sailors and family members strong, facilitating, um, facilitating uh, personal and family resilience, as well as ensuring command and uh, community well-being. Great. So what is, that seems like a lot, <laughs> you know, and our sailors and their families are very busy. What are the different types of delivery models, I guess we'd say in healthcare, but really in any program? How, how can people access these programs? Do they need to drive to the, drive to the installation? walk in, you know, have an appointment, and how how do they access these, these resources? So Fleet and Family Support Centers have a full complement of programs, including integrated primary prevention, counseling advocacy and prevention, sexual assault and prevention response, as well as work and family life. And so we have a blended delivery model. So our sailors and family members can go in person to the Fleet and Family Support Center, but we also offer it online, virtual, and through apps. So in-person, online, virtual, via apps. Boy, you're pretty accessible then. That's, that's great. You know, to have all these great programs, which we're going to get into, sure, certainly, and more specifically, um, you know, what's it going to cost in terms of money for a sailor or their family members to leverage these sorts of programs? Yeah, so the benefit for our sailors and families is that it's at no cost to them, so they can access these services. So it's free. It is free. It's available. Mm -hmm. They're available right now and they are free. Yes. Wow. Okay. And I'm wondering if you could speak just a little bit about the broad reach of the fleet and family support programs. How many sailors does it has it touched? Do people like the programs? Because I don't want to send our mm -hmm. sailors and, and family members to something that's no good. Like how is the how is it being accepted? 
Yeah, so our um, programs and services are available to um, worldwide at 81 delivery sites with 58 of them offering a full um, portfolio of programs and services. So last year, our Fleet and Family Support Centers combined had over uh, 3.2 million contacts uh, with sailors and their family members, and our satisfaction rate is a 99.7%. 99.7% satisfaction. That's fabulous. Okay. So now we're going to talk a little more about specific programs that are available through fleet and family uh, support programs. We're, we are just going to scratch the surface here. So I want to make sure if there's you know something you're at home or you're on your phone watching this and there's something interesting to you, you want to learn more about, we will have uh, ways to access all of these resources here on the screen so you can see where where you can go to access them um, I you know I've never served but the biggest stressor and to this day the biggest stressor in my life is when uh, we started at home a family and the stress started as soon as my wife said she was pregnant and frankly it hasn't stopped now my kids are I'm a teenager now and, and that kind of thing so I know in my world it's a stressful situation to have to have kids and, and to, to be a new parent and I can only imagine that stress is doubled or tripled for a young sailor and their families as they're just getting their career going as well um, are there resources available? Are there programs available for new parents uh, or parents of young children? Uh, what's out there for them? Yeah, so we have what is known as the New Parent Support Program. It is for expected parents as well as for, uh, for parents who have children from ages zero to three. And they're eligible for um, services. And so with New Parent Support, the bread and butter of the program is the home visitation. And so a New Parent Support home visitor will go out to the home to deliver education support to families. Um, it's a great way um, to prevent child abuse and neglect. They will answer questions. They will provide psychoeducation using a uh, evidence-based curriculum. Um, new parent support home visitors will come with resources and links, and it just gives the um, parent an opportunity to ask questions, to get that information. They don't have to go into fleet and family, which is nice. Um, and evidence does show that um, intensive home visitation does work in terms of delivering uh, support and education. Wow, so if I'm a new parent and I'm looking for some kind of resources to help me, fleet and family support programs, I can work with them and they will send somebody, an expert in this area, to my house to work with me so I can learn skills and strategies because it's tough when your child, in my case, when your daughter wants the pink dress, she's never had a pink dress and there she is on the floor having a meltdown and you got to run out to get to church or something like that. It's tough. So somebody will actually come from fleet and family support programs to my house and work with me for a series of, of appointments or times. Yeah, and what's great about the new parent support program is that even though it says new parent support is that you don't have to be a new parent. I, I've known that there are families who love the visitation and having a home visitor. So they may be on their second kid and they still want access to new parent support and the resources. So it's just a great opportunity to have someone come to your home and provide that education and support. Um, in addition, um, we new parent support also offers um, play groups. Um, it's a great way for families to meet other families families, especially in areas where um, there's a lack of uh, resources or it's a little bit more isolated. And then the home visitors may also provide classes um, at Fleet and Family, including um, birthing classes or parenting classes. Um, it's just It just depends on the needs of the installation um, and what the uh, parents want. So I just recommend that if um, there's parents out there who are interested in learning more about new parent support to reach out to Fleet and Family. Okay, thank you. And do you think, I know anybody can be a little reluctant to have, you know, even a well-meaning stranger come into their house at first. And it's kind of a private thing, parenting. It can be intimate. Uh, if I'm nervous about that, how do people typically get more comfortable or, you know, are they satisfied with the program? How do they get over that hump? If somebody's watching this going, well, that sounds great, but 
I don't know if I want somebody I don't know yet into my own house. Yeah, so it's a voluntary program. Um, so I would recommend that the parent reach out to Cleveland family and talk to a new parent support home visitor, kind of get more information about the program. Um, they can, I always say that they can have the new parent support home visitor come out to the home and um, provide that first session where they can learn more about the program and then decide whether or not they want to continue. I, um, when I used to be a new parent support home visitor, and that's what I would always tell my parents is, hey, this is a voluntary program. If you're, you know, I'm gonna meet you where you are at. So if um, you want me to come to your house and we meet outside of your house, um, just to kind of develop that rapport first, that's totally fine. If you wanted me in the office and to get more information, we can do that before we start with home visits. I love that. We're gonna meet you where you're at. So, and that's great, of course. I'm not really comfortable, but yes, we can meet on my porch or maybe at the library or something like that or at the park here on, on base. Yeah, and you know, if the home visitors have play groups um, or parenting classes, the parents can go to that first to kind of um, develop that relationship with the home visitor and find out more information, talk to other parents about the program um, before having them uh, start home visitation. You know, you bring up a good point about sometimes people can be thrown off or don't leverage a program because the title of the program doesn't seem to fit with who they are. But I love how you said you don't have to be a new parent to uh, access new parent support resources or program resources. Um, that's just the title. And so I would really emphasize to the folks at home if you're not sure a resource is available or you're eligible to leverage it, the short answer is I bet you can and go and explore and go to the website or go to these links that we have. Uh, make the phone call just to double check. I know I've talked to sailors about fleet and family support programs in the past and I was like, there are wonderful resources here about X, Y, and Z, which we're gonna talk about. And they say, but I don't have a family. So I'm not, I, I don't think I can use fleet and family support programs. And, I say, no, of course you can, but I understand their position. They don't quite know. So what would you recommend to a, a young or any sailor for that matter or their family members when kicking the tires on resources, but they're not sure it's right for them? Yeah, so a lot of our programs are voluntary. Mm -hmm. um, so I say come in with an open mind, just hear about what's being offered by fleet and family before making the decision. Um, our job at uh, Fleet of Family is to really support families and give them the, what the resources and support that they want and need and provide psychoeducation. So we always start our first sessions with giving the sailor and the family member information about the program so that they can make an informed decision on whether or not they want to participate in the program. It's voluntary. Yes. Okay, got it. Thank you. Um, you know, I think all sailors uh, and family members are probably aware that if they are in a dealing with certain, let's say, mental health issues, they're definitely able uh, to add, there's definitely care available at the military treatment facility, at the MTF on base. Um, but I'm wondering if there's services available for sailors uh, that are maybe not feeling like they need to go to the military treatment facility on base, but they're just kind of needing a little help with dealing with life, like life stressors. Uh, maybe they're getting ready to TDY and they're not happy about stuff, uh, getting uh, moving or they're dealing with grief or there's deployment relocation issues. Uh, they're just having arguments with their girlfriend or boyfriend, you know. They don't really feel like they need to make the trip to the MTF exactly, but they could use a little help. They could use a little booster in the resilience department. What kind of resources through feet and family support programs or at CNIC are available to sailors who are just needing uh, a little help or a little assistance or a little coaching, as I said, kind of just dealing with life stressors? Yeah, so the Navy has um, what is called clinical counseling. So that's non-medical counseling. It's supposed to help sailors and their family members on areas such as relocation, deployment, grief, loss, parent-child interaction, relationship issues, and other challenges related to the military and family lifestyle. And so um, clinical counseling is offered to individuals, couples, and counseling. And you can... Uh, 
a sailor or family member can participate in clinical counseling, either in person at Fleet and Family or through our virtual clinical counseling services. Ooh, tell me about that. Because some, you know, the biggest pushback I get for getting this kind of assistance, uh, as you just described, is, man, I just don't have the time to get over to a certain place. But you mentioned virtual clinical counseling. Tell us more. Yes, yeah, so the Navy just launched virtual clinical counseling this year. It's non-medical counseling on the topics I just had mentioned. And so it's available worldwide. Um, and so it's just a great opportunity for sailors and family members to access clinical counseling in the comforts of their home. So all they need is a private location as well as internet connection. And so for many families who may live off base or it's a challenge to get on base to a fleet and family because of the commute or they have children or other um, things going on, this is easy access to virtual clinical counseling. Got it. Okay, that's fabulous. So you can do it on your phone perhaps. Yeah, yeah, so um, it's done through Microsoft Teams and you can download the app or you use it on your computer. Cool. Now, do you have to be, that sounds awesome, by the way, to be able to have it kind of at, the, uh, at your convenience, that kind of help uh, that we can frankly all use when dealing with life stressors. And you mentioned this, but I just want to double check I heard correctly. Who is eligible for this type of service? What kind of sailor? Any sailor who is dealing with um, concerns about either, you know, they're having relationship issues with their significant other, they're dealing um, with concerns at work, um, either being deployed or they're having concerns with their chain of command or having conflicts with their colleagues um, and they just want someone to talk to. Um, it is brief um, solution focused counseling. So they are, it, it is supposed to be within eight to 12 sessions. Um, so those would be beneficial in terms of receiving clinical counseling. Well, thank you. And I love what you said there. It, it is brief and solution focused. So this isn't something when you engage in virtual clinical counseling, it's not necessarily going to take three years to work through all your stuff. You're really more laser focused on a particular problem, be it a conflict at work, family, things like that. Did I hear correctly? Yes, the clinician will work with the sailor or family member on those concerns. Um, and of course, if there's a need, a higher need of care, then the uh, clinician will refer the sailor out. Okay. And, you know, we're talking about these clinicians and sometimes I hear from sailors when we talk about this, these types of resources, yeah, but am I getting like a substandard clinician? Is Are the best clinicians at the MTFs? Like what kind of training do these people have? Because if I just want advice, I could talk to my friends, you know, at the gym, but it's not quite that. What, what kind of training do these folks have? Yes, yeah, so our clinicians are licensed clinical um, providers. So they either have a license in social work, um, a marriage and family counseling, um, they're licensed professional counselors, or they have a doctorate in clinical psychology. Um, they all have to be credentialed and privileged in the Navy, and they're all required to take trainings, and they have their own set of requirements. Um, in addition, virtual clinical counselors are part of Fleet and Family, um, and so these remote clinical counselors are held to the same standards at our, as our Fleet and Family Support Center um, clinicians. So they're the real deal then? Yes. Okay, got it. This sounds fantastic, but I wonder, you know, what kind of, how are we able to help our sailors uh, that are underway, that are that are on board on ships? You know, sometimes they can't make it in, of course, to fleet family support program and things like that. What kind of resources are available to sailors that are at sea? So we have deployed resiliency counselors, otherwise known as DRCs, and they are licensed clinicians that provide non-medical counseling aboard aircraft carriers and large deck amphibious assault ships. And what is great about the, the DRCs is that they will um, provide services home port in home port as well as during deployment. So they will be out with the um, ship providing clinical counseling. Or if I'm a sailor, there's so many wonderful resources that are out there. How does virtual clinical counseling relate to the services that I'm tracking that are available through, say, Military One Source? I know they're Greater DOD, and I think virtual clinical counseling is Navy, but are they the same? 
tell me a little bit about the similarities and differences, just so I can have it straight in my mind. So, um, Military One Source and the M MFLAC program, which is the Military Family Life Counselor program, are DOD programs. So the Department of Defense developed these programs to um, provide non-medical counseling to all branches. And it's intended to augment, not replace what's being offered by each branch of services. So that's great for us and for the sailors because it just gives them more opportunities to access non-medical counseling either through um, Military One Source or through the MFLAC program or if they want to do virtual clinical counseling they can contact um, their Fleet and Family Support Center um, and, and to access a virtual clinical counseling through the Navy all they have to do is just call the 1855 number and a centralized scheduler will um, schedule their appointment for virtual clinical counseling. And then for OCONUS locations, I know sometimes it's hard to call the 1855 number. Um, so we do have a uh, link where they um, can use to express their interest. And then a scheduled, uh, centralized scheduler will reach out to them to schedule their appointment. Got it. So Navy's not keeping score then. If a sailor or family member wishes to use virtual clinical counseling, it's free, it's available, excellent. If they wish to leverage Military One Source, fine, or the MFLAX, that's just as good too. We don't have a, we're not saying we have a preference, we just wanna make sure sailors and their family members can access all the resources that are available to them when they'd like to. Yeah, so it's really up to the sailor and family member to decide what route they want to go to. They all provide non-medical counseling. It just gives them more options and availability. Okay, and is that the same as, you know, this is my world and even I get confused sometimes. So we have the deployment resiliency counselors that are underway, as you mentioned, but what about the uh, EIPCs? Uh, what, I've heard that term too. Uh, how do they fit in? So they are embedded integrated prevention coordinators and they're part of the integrated primary uh, prevention workforce mission and they are deployed personnel. So they also deploy with large deck amphibious assault ships and aircraft carriers. And their uh, mission is to advise leadership on data informed actions, prevention methodologies, as well as provide prevention and trainings that focus on the well-being and the readiness for the sailors. And the goal for providing these trainings is hopefully to reduce high risk behavior so there is less of a need for a deployed residency counselor or a shore-based clinician. Got it. So this makes me think, you know, this interview is happening, you know, in support of Suicide Prevention Month, which is every uh, September. And sometimes people might think as they're watching this, well, how is addressing, you know, conflict at work suicide prevention? How is dealing with new parent stress suicide prevention? Um, how is how are these you know intervening early and addressing you know problems maybe before they get out of hand how how do you frame that as suicide prevention sure so i always say that seeking help is a sign of strength it's better to be proactive and seek resources um, before it gets to an escalated level of where it, there is a higher need. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I feel that um, Suicide Prevention Month is just not a 30-day blitz of suicide prevention efforts. Mm -hmm. It really is a great way to continue the conversation or start the conversation. Um, it's where it's a year long, where you continue the efforts of taking care of our sailors every day. And so uh, we really want to make sure that we uh, the conversation continues to support a positive culture where we can discuss um, seeking help, um, providing uh, resources for our sailors and family members, where we can talk about mental health and be open about it. So engaging, say, with a virtual clinical counselor on sort of your everyday life stressor really does fall into, we call it the continuum of suicide prevention. We're way upstream, but what we find with our sailors um, who unfortunately die by suicide is many of them, the majority of them, are never make it to mental health but they're almost all dealing with stress. And we just don't know what that one stressor, I'm kind of laying straws on the camel's back, what one stressor is gonna be the one that really puts somebody 
into a crisis. And so I agree with you. Addressing where you get that prickly feeling, or you're like, man, I'm yelling too much at work, or I'm having, I usually have two beers after work, and now I'm on to six. When you kind of recognize that, reaching out for any kind of help is a sign of strength because you're tackling that stress earlier before it, frankly, tackles you later. So let me ask, suppose I, um, I am having a little bit more of a crisis and I'm having, say, a suicide uh, related behavior like thinking about harming myself or even perhaps even acting on it. Uh, what kind of care is available? What kind of services are available through Fleet and Family Support programs to make sure I have support after I'm experiencing that? Sure. So we have what is called the Sailor Assistance and Intercept for Life program and it's a voluntary program um, that really assists the sailor during a stressful period of time after a suicide related behavior which is an ideation or attempt and so the sail case manager will provide support and care coordination through a series of caring contacts over a period of 90 days after a suicide related behavior okay and Sorry. Oh, and it's um, also it's done over either telephonically or uh, over Microsoft Teams. Gotcha. So the the care you mentioned caring contacts for ninety days, which is roughly three months. What does that look like? What can I expect during one of those caring contacts? Sure. Um, so since this is a voluntary program. Um, how it makes it to the sale case manager is that anytime there's a suicide related behavior, the command suicide prevention coordinator will submit a sale referral um, to the sale team. Mm -hmm. And so the sale case manager will reach out to the sailor and explain what sale is, um, answer any questions, and then offer sale services. If the, if the sailor says, yes, I'm interested, then they will set up a series of caring contacts. Um, so whether it's done telephonically or through Microsoft Teams, um, the case manager will um, check in with the sailor um, during the securing contacts and say how things are going, what do you need help with, what resources do you need. They'll talk about safety planning. They'll, um, the sail case manager will provide resources if the sailor is like, hey, I'm looking for additional services like new parent support, or I'm, you know, if the sailor is like, I need. Um, counseling, then the case manager will help the sailor find those services. Okay, fantastic. And again, if I'm thinking, you know, if I'm watching this and I'm a sailor and I'm thinking, that sounds really good, but still, I don't know. I mean, whenever you get kind of in the resilience space, sometimes people are apprehensive and want to keep a little distance. So I just want to confirm, much like the new parent support program that we talked about earlier and the virtual clinical counseling and all the other resources we've mentioned, the SAIL program, although I think it's great and important, it's still voluntary, right? And someone can start it and stop it as they wish. Yes, it's completely voluntary. And, um, you know, I read the evaluations from sailors who complete the SAIL program and a lot of them say, you know, I was nervous about it at the beginning. I didn't know what to expect or they felt like they didn't need it. But as soon as they started having those series of caring contacts with the SAIL case manager and developed the relationship and felt like they were being listened to by the SAIL case manager or the SAIL case manager went out of their way to help them find services or provide them with psychoeducation, um, they felt like, wow, these cell case managers are here to help me and I do want to continue that relationship with them. But if it turns out that the sailor is um, either feels that they no longer need these caring contacts, um, they're more than welcome to tell their case manager and the case manager will help them um, in terms of aftercare planning. Like what will that look like when the sail case manager is no longer in uh, the sailor's life? Okay. I think one great thing about the sail program is that it's there as a safety net, if the sailor wishes, specifically and precisely at a time when they may be very vulnerable. I mean, if you have a suicidal thought or action, wonderful that you didn't act on it, or wonderful that you're, you're healthy and alive, but it's scary and you can kind of feel alone. And the Navy is a busy place and the mission continues. And it sounds to me like the SAIL program, at this moment of when somebody is maybe not 100%, is there as just a wonderful safety net to support them at that precise time that they may need it the most. Yeah, so it's additional support for the sailor. So um, they are just a, 
another person where they can talk, feel like they can talk to um, that's not the command, it's a, another provider. Um, and just as a reminder, sale is um, not a form of mental health treatment, it's just additional support for the sailor. Great. You know, we had mentioned how uh, we look at the data for those who died by suicide year after year. And one trend that we notice in, in my shop, in my world specifically, looking at the data, is that the sailors, the majority who die by suicide, are younger, you know, more junior uh, sailors, uh, officer or enlisted, and are often under stress. And who isn't under stress? But we, you know, it's compounded, I think, when you're focused on the mission and you've got a job to do and you may be separated from your family. One of the biggest stressors we know uh, that sailors are feeling, frankly, we all are, is are related to finance, finances and financial management. And I know, you know, even when I was 19 years old, I qualified for my first credit card. I didn't know what that meant, but next thing you know, I had $3,000 at my fingertips in this little piece of plastic. And then we all, our financial readiness and maturity, we all counseled each other and said, oh yeah, when the bill comes, you don't have to pay the whole thing. You just pay the minimum. And so then you can keep using this credit card. And that, you know, put my collective friend group and I very much behind the eight ball in terms of financial uh, hardship at that age. And so I'm sure that that can happen as well with, with sailors. Um, you get a little bit of money, you, you can finance cars, you can start buying things. And, you know, sometimes it can get, you can get a little underwater or you get a little over your skis or, or pick your term. Specifically for financial concerns or stresses that a sailor is feeling, what resources are available through fleet and family support programs to help target that particular issue? Yeah, so definitely um, finances is a top stressor for many relationships um, and families. And so um, we have what is known as the personal financial management program. And it's a service that includes information and referral, includes education and training, as well as financial counseling. So if a sailor or family member is interested in meeting with a financial counselor, they can set up an appointment and that w and some goals that they can work on is to um, develop uh, financial goals and then maintaining and achieving financial readiness. So if it could be topics such as um, developing a budget, um, looking at major purchases like house or car buying, or thinking about the future in terms of investing and retirement. Wow, that is fantastic. And boy, do I wish I had something like that you know, many years ago. Uh, and it just, I know you've mentioned this, but these services uh, would be at no cost to sailors and their family members. That's correct. Um, it's no cost to for any of our fleet and family support program services. Well, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it's out there and it can be leveraged today by yes. sailors and their family members. Got it. We have talked about a lot of resources so far. And if someone is watching this, they may be thinking, uh, my head's a little swimming. This all sounds great, but is there a place that I can go, that the Navy has, that is sort of a hub for all the fleet and family support programs. So when I'm waiting at my kid's basketball game or waiting for the bus or wherever, I can go and kind of look through all the resource that, resources that are available on my own time. Yes, um, so we have what is known as My Navy Family um, Portal, and it's a one-stop shop of online resources and links that focuses on various aspects of the military life cycle. So we're looking at topical areas like relocation, um, deployment, uh, parenting, wellness, employment. And so there's a list of um, online uh, online trainings as well as on-demand trainings. Um, so some recent classes have been for anger management, stress management, um, decoding uh, crediting plans, um, as well as um, mind, body, mental fitness. Um, and then so uh, there's just a whole list of classes, um, parenting your 
Toddler is another cla popular class that's on the um, My Navy Family Parent Portal. And toddlers. Yes. <laughs> and um, in addition, uh, we also have resources like the Navy Family E Handbook, the New Spouses Orientation, a spouse resource library um, that parents or spouses or friends can access. They can access that through MyNavyFamily.com as well as we have the My Navy Family app and you can download that app either in Google Play or the um, Apple uh, App Store. Okay, and you know, at, at in the Navy Fleet and Family Support Programs, I, I wanna ask you a little bit about the idea. You know, here we are in 2024 and I think you know, 20 years ago even, there was a thought that, well, my emotions, my mental health, my resilience, that's from the neck up. And everything else is disassociated. It's just, that's just, it's just my body from the neck down. And so you've heard a term, get a checkup from the neck up and all that. But we really know that's kind of a, an archaic saying at this point because there is such an indisputable connection between the mind and the body body's feeling good, it can help the mind feel better, there's release of endorphins and dopamine and things like that. We all know from exercise, good sleep, healthy diets, all that stuff really matters, which is our body, but with our overall physical and emotional um, well-being. Is there a resource at Fleet and Family Support Programs or even on the, the Family Portal that can address and kind of help somebody explore that mind-body connection. Yeah, so we have Mind Body Mental Fitness, which is a series of uh, courses on MyNavyFamily.com or through the My Navy Family app, um, where it focuses on the domains of mind, body, um, spirit, and social domains of one's life. And it's just a great opportunity to learn um, different tools to manage your stress levels. Great. I think that's so important because that's, we all know it's all connected at this point. Our mind and our body, they're one. So you can't have one without the other. Exactly. So as we summarize here, we've talked a lot about really great programs available at uh, Fleet and Family Support programs and then at Greater DOD even. But we're focused on Suicide Prevention Month. But why, Kathy, do you think is it important for us to talk about these topics, not just for September, but all year round. Yeah, it's important to just discuss it. It's a year long conversation. Um, we really want to encourage uh, people to feel comfortable to, in terms of talking about mental health, but looking for resources, sharing resources with others. And we know that with the Navy, we take care of our own. So it's important for everyone to know about the resources, especially Flea and Family Support Program, services to either for themselves or for others like their family members or another colleague. Um, so it's just a great opportunity to know what's out there and to share it with others. Got it. Now, one of the f bits of feedback I sometimes receive when I'm out um, at the deck plate is I mentioned fleet and family support programs and all the great resources that we've discussed and I get a lot of head scratching. Like, I, I haven't heard of that. How do I access this? What would you say to help get the word out about all these great resources? Suppose somebody's watching this right now and they may think, well, I don't need any of this, but why is it still important for them to know that these resources are out there and they're free and available worldwide? Yeah, so you never know when you'll need it. Um, it's just always, I always say you should have a your own toolkit um, and just know what's out there so whenever you do need them you'll know where to go to or how to access the services. And is it fair to say maybe not even for myself but maybe I'm squared away financially or at least I think I am but the guy I'm spotting on the bench he's telling me about his finances and I'm like whoa it would be okay if I at least pointed him in the direction of the financial readiness program within Fleet and Family Support Program. It's I can help spread the word even if I don't need the resource myself. Is that right? Correct. So I just say, you know, when you're having a conversation, we know that people have stressors in either their work or um, life in terms of personal mm -hmm. um, at home. And so, you know, if you're talking to someone and they're saying, hey, you know, I'm having trouble um, managing a budget or I'm a new parent and I'm stressed or my significant other is looking for um, classes on parenting that you can provide the resources or links to the uh, sailor or family member that may need 
the services. Right, so as you mentioned, the Navy takes care of its own and that may even look at, maybe it's take the form of you know, one sailor to another at the same level of saying, hey, here's my resource, here's something I leveraged, I use this program, you might want to think about it for yourself. Or I just heard about you know, this financial readiness program, or I heard like there's virtual clinical counseling, if you want to check it out, here's how I, I think you can get access to it. We can help spread the word that way. Yes, yeah, so I say the best way to disseminate information is from a friend to another friend, a sailor to another colleague. It's just the best way of spreading the information. Got it. And so how can I learn more about fleet and family support programs? How can I stay in touch with the latest information? Yeah, so at Commander Navy Installations Command, we are on all the social media pages, so we have Facebook, we're on X. We also have a landing page um, with more information about our programs and services. And then I just encourage those um, sailors and family members to check out their local Fleet and Family Support Center for more information about our programs, as well as check out their local uh, Fleet and Family Support Center pages. Excellent. Well, Ms. Kathy Vai, it has been a real pleasure talking to you today and learning more about Navy's Fleet and Family Support programs and what resources are out there. As you can see, there's many access points to get to this information on social media, on the web pages. I would encourage every sailor and family member to at least know these resources are out there. They are there, they are for you, they are free. So please learn about them, spread the word, and so we can take care of each other. Uh, Kathy. It's been a pleasure. The last word is yours. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I hope that someone will contact us to learn more information about programs and services. We're here for our sailors and family members, and we look forward to meeting those who want to know more about our services. Great, thank you. Thank you. For the Department of Navy Office of Force Resiliency, this is Dr. Nick Polizzi thanking you for joining us today for our interview with Ms. Kathy Vai from CNIC. Your quality of service matters, Navy resources. Thank you and have a great day.